Welcome to Track and Field TV. I'm Ashley Taylor. And I'm Nicole Fiorini. The North American, Central American, and Caribbean Games are coming to Toronto. That's right, Nicole. Over 350 athletes are competing in 42 track and field events over three action-packed days. The third edition of NACAC Championship starts this Friday and goes until Sunday at Varsity Stadium in Toronto. The first NACAC Games were held in El Salvador in 2007. Costa Rica hosted the second edition of the Games in 2015. This is the first edition to be held in North America and it all starts now in the NACAC preview show. If you're a Canadian fan, there's a lot to be excited about. Athletes like Caroline Earhart and Andre Ford are among the big names that have confirmed their presence in the event. Aaron Brown is one of the Canadian stars that will be competing at the Games. Brown became the country's fastest man at the Canadian National Championships in July, winning both the 100 meter and 200 meter events. The 26 year old will be in the starting blocks on three separate occasions at NACAC. While lots of star athletes will be competing in Toronto, one of Canada's most famous sprinters will not. Olympic silver medalist Andre de Grasse will miss the championships with a hamstring injury. With more on this story, we go to Jess Kofi. After missing nine months of competition following a hamstring tear last July, it seemed like things were finally back on track for Andre de Grasse. He returned to action this April clocking 10.15 seconds in the 100 meters at the Drake Relays. In May, the Scarborough native ran a time of 20.46 in his 200 meter season debut. Two weeks later, the new father participated in the Canadian Track and Field Championships. When it came down to the semi-final heat of the 200 meter event, the grass was in the lead on the final straightaway and looked to be cruising to an easy victory. But that's where his circumstances changed. With about 30 meters to go, the sprinter pulled up, unable to finish the race. An MRI the following day would reveal a grade one strain in one of his hamstring muscles. As a result of this injury, DeGrasse will not be running in the NACAC championships. The Olympic silver medalist is disappointed, saying that he was looking forward to representing Canada in front of his hometown crowd. But he did find a silver lining. He gets to spend more time with Yuri, his newborn daughter. While DeGrasse may not be competing in August, the new fastest man in Canada certainly will be. In early July, Aaron Brown absolutely dominated the Canadian Track and Field Championships. First, he won the 100-meter event, beating DeGrasse by four one-hundredths of a second. The next day, Brown won the 200-meter race to collect his second gold medal of the championships. This year, the Toronto native became the second Canadian in history to run a sub-10 in the 100 meters as well as under 20 seconds in the 200 meters. Who was the first? Andre de Grasse. People often speak of de Grasse and Brown in a similar vein. In describing Brown, Athletics Canada COO Matt Genta said, he was the guy, he was the next guy. And then Andre came along. Well, Andre won't be at Varsity Stadium. We'll see if Aaron Brown can finally be the guy. Thanks, Jess. In the 2016 Summer Olympics, Canada originally finished fourth in the men's 4 by 100 meter relay. Andre de Grasse, Aaron Brown, and the rest of the Canadians were devastated, just barely missing out on a medal. But the U.S. was disqualified for an illegal baton exchange, giving the Canucks the bronze medal. Though de Grasse won't be part of NACAC, he's had plenty of success in international competition. Two medal in the 2016 Rio Olympics and a very strong performance in Moscow in 2015. It would have been interesting to see what de Grasse could accomplish on home soil. At the 2015 Pan Am Games, the Canadian men's relay team got a taste of what it would feel like to win at home, but their celebration came a little too soon. The Canadian team thought they had the gold in men's 4x100 meter relay when they crossed the finish line with a record time of 38.06. However, they were later disqualified when reviews showed that Gavin Smelly stopped on the line during the first leg of the race. With that gold medal taken away, Canada's men have never medaled at the 4x100 meter relay on Canadian turf. This is something that Aaron Brown and the rest of the Canadians will be looking to change come August at the NACAC Championships. Let's take a look at Aaron Brown's performance on the international stage. Brown has some amazing accomplishments in his medal collection, including an Olympic bronze medal in the 4x100 meter relay and a handful of IAAF medals from 2013 and 2015. 
The Toronto native will be a strong contender in NACAC this year, competing in the 100 meter, 200 meter, and 4x100 meter relay. There are a lot of Canadian athletes to be excited about at the upcoming NACAC Games. 22-year-old Justin Knight is Canada's biggest hope at the men's 5,000 meter event. This year, the Toronto native won the 5,000 meter final for Syracuse at the NCAA Division I Indoor Track and Field Championships. Knight also finished second place at the 3,000 meter finals. Here's more on Canadian up-and-comer Justin Knight. I think I kind of got into track by fluke. Um, I was actually a basketball and volleyball player here at St. Mike's, and uh, my gym teacher, Mr. Chittle, he said <laughs> he said that I wasn't giving my best effort in gym class, and therefore, like, I had a pretty low grade. And uh, you know, gym is supposed to be one of the easier subjects, at least like for someone that's an athlete. So, you know, I asked him how I could like bump up my grade, and he said there was one subject left, and it was running. So if I show my best effort in that, then you know he'll boost up my grade. And uh, what I did is I kind of made sure that I stayed at the front of the pack um, when we did like training for a 5K and stuff. And then when it actually came down to that, you know, actual 5K at our school, I like broke the school record. And then um, they asked me to join the track team later on. My guys at Syracuse, you know, they've always been really open towards me. Uh, they understand that I don't have that long of a running background. So they were always very patient and, you know, tried to help guide me along the way in any which way that they possibly could. And um, some of the things was just like what type of foods to eat, um, how long to eat before a race, what I should be doing to prep for a race, um, you know, stuff like that. And they were really helpful. Uh, my career at Syracuse has been like really extraordinary and it couldn't have gone any better. Uh, from when I was getting recruited there, Coach Fox, he told me that, you know, his plans for me is to win an individual NCAA championship and as well as a team one. And uh, I was fortunate enough to come out with both. And uh, kind of looking back at my career at Syracuse, I think my most uh, prideful moment is kind of winning a team championship because I think when you can share success with your whole, t with your whole team and with your peers, it's a lot more fun than just uh, achieving something by yourself. Let's see what this final 400 split is as Justin Knight takes over the lead and starts moving. I think even going to the States actually made me take more pride in being from Toronto. Um, for one, you know, you can get anything you need. I think. Uh, everything's easily accessible and you know from the subway just being able to go anywhere you want also I think like the city is very multicultural um, that's something that you don't really see in the States that often uh, just coming to Toronto and being able to see every single culture almost represented in the world in one city I think that's really special and it makes us very diverse and I think that's really important and when it comes to uh, understanding world affairs you kind of get to uh, understand other people's cultures just because you're friends with them or that you're involved in the same community as they at, they are. So I think as a whole just you know Toronto is just a huge melting pot and I think that's something really special about the city. I do like how it's a little less busy than New York City but it still feels like you're part of a big city at the same time and uh, I think it's just generally beautiful here. Man, it's look at Knight, is Knight making the pass? See you later! Oh man, now committed. 600 meters to go. This could be a huge race. Justin Knight, this is his fifth year running. Don't forget that. Ever. He, every time he steps on a track in a race like this, he learns something new about himself. Um, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I think the most special thing about this race is that, you know, people I grew up with, my friends and, you know, fans that I have in Toronto actually will have a chance to watch me run. Uh, you know, some people have only watched me run in high school and some people haven't, you know, been fortunate enough to get me, get a chance to watch me run at all, seeing that I went uh, to the States for school and I competed all over the place. But I think just being able to come home, wear my Canadian singlet, uh, represent myself, the country, and my family really well on my home turf, I think that's really special and it's just something that you don't get to do every day. Showing their power and here comes Justin Knight powering through the line. He's looking good. This guy in second's looking real good too. Aiden took He's going to be close. 341 is what they're looking for. He looks back and he's is up 342. Justin Knight is Canada's biggest hope in cross country running. The Syracuse alumni won the Junior U20 Pan American Cross Country Cup in 2015 and looks for his first medal in the main categories at just 22 years of age. 
Despite DeGrasse not competing at the NACAC championships, there are plenty of other notable athletes that fans are looking for. We ran a Twitter poll to see which athletes fans are most excited to see with Andre missing the games. The results came back 16% for Genevieve Lalonde, 18% for Brittany Crew, and a tie for 33% for Aaron Brown and Justin Knight. Coming up next, Justin Knight relives his past and Caroline Earhart and Kamika Bingham discuss their participation in track and field while dealing with heartbreak. Now the games themselves will be taking place at Varsity Stadium. The site has seen its fair share of historic moments throughout the years. Grey Cup was certainly a highlight. Over 39,000 people were in attendance as the Edmonton Eskimos defeated the Montreal Alouettes by a score of 50 to 27. The 1969 Rock and Roll Revival concert was a quite a big deal as well. Rolling Stone magazine went as far to call it as the second most important rock and roll concert in history. John Lennon played during the show and even wrote an album about it entitled Live Peace in Toronto. The stadium also has undergone some renovations in anticipation of the games. The most notable change has been the installation of the new track. It was installed by a company named Mondo. They've been the world's top track surfacer for the past 30 years. The rubber-based top layer of the track provides unparalleled elasticity, which boosts a runner's performance by cutting the time required for spike penetration and retraction. Now that the foundation has been set, history can continue to be made at Varsity Stadium. When Caroline Earhart was 11 years old, she lost her mother to breast cancer. As a coping mechanism, she immersed herself in the sport of triple jump, using it as an outlet to deal with her pain. The Espanola native went on to dominate the sport, becoming the seven-time Canadian triple jump champion. Still, Canada's never had a female triple jumper qualify for the Olympics. Caroline Earhart hopes to change that. Uh, no, you know, no female Canadian triple jumper has, has made the Olympics. Um, how <laughs> much would it mean to you to, to make the 2020 games or to make you know, the Olympic Games. Right. It would be huge. Um, it has definitely been my dream, like, my whole life. Obviously, all kids who are involved in sport dream of one day going to the Olympics. But, you know, for me, that never really went away. And there's been a few phases throughout my career where uh, my progress has kind of been a little bit non-existent. And I, I was still really far away from that Olympic standard. And I started to think, you know, like, why me? Why why would I be the one person that's able to achieve this feat that no one's been able to do? But um, fortunately, I, I'm now at a point in my life where I kind of think about it another way, where it's like, why not me? Like, if, if anyone's going to do it, why could it not be me? I've been involved in this sport from the very beginning, and I've had the most amazing experiences. So if anyone can do it, I don't see why it, it can't be me. Are you looking forward to the, the knockout games? Yes, I'm so excited. Um, I've been really fortunate to have a few major championships in Canada. Um, I was on the World Junior Team when it was in Moncton, New Brunswick in 2010. Uh, and then I was a part of the Pan Am Championships in Toronto in 2015. So it's always just so amazing to get to compete in front of a home crowd. Um, not only from a from the standpoint of the, the stands being packed with Canadians, but also from um, a famili familiarity standpoint and from not having to make any huge adjustments um, you know it's always um, it's there's always an adjustment to be made when you're traveling to a different country getting used to the food getting used to the time zone um, so it's gonna be really nice to just you know hop on the train for two hours to Toronto and um, and get settled in um, so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to it
If Caroline intends to take home the gold in Toronto, she's going to have to beat Shanika Ricketts. The Jamaican star won gold at the 2015 NACAC Championships with a triple jump distance of 14.23 meters. Ricketts will be in Toronto to defend her NACAC crown. The women's triple jump final will be taking place Sunday, August 12th at 3.15 p.m. at Varsity Stadium. At only 24 years old, Kamika Bingham has experienced a lot. She's been a national level gymnast and an Olympic sprinter. She's also dealt with unthinkable heartbreak. In March of 2015, she watched one of her best friends drown right in front of her eyes. Here is Kamika's story. Fastest woman in Canada. Most can only dream of such a title. But when Kamika Bingham ran 11.13 seconds in the 100 meter final at the 2015 Pan Am Games, that's exactly what she could call herself. Just to know like you were the representation of being the fastest in Canada for a whole nation. There's so many amazing athletes in Canada that it was like, oh my god, me? Like, I'm the fastest, I'm the best representative of Canada. It was like something I dreamed of as a kid. In 2016, Bingham represented Team Canada at the Olympic Games in Rio. She'll never forget what it felt like to walk into Maracana Stadium for the opening ceremonies. It's like, you cannot prepare yourself for that. Like, I try to mentally visualize what it would be like to go out there and, you know, see the crowd and knowing, like, you're at the Olympic Games, but you can't prepare for it. It just kind of happens, and then all that adrenaline and just knowing that there's millions of people watching, knowing that no matter what, if you do your best, Canada's proud of you. And it's honestly like, you can't wrap it into, into words. It's like that moment is like you have no control over it and you're just overwhelmed with joy, excitement, and you just want to go. Um, it was one of the best experiences of my life to wear that. Bingham ran anchor for the women's 4x100 meter relay team. The women's team hadn't made the finals at this event since 1984. It looked like the drought would continue when Canada fell behind China in the semi-final heat. Team China was about five meters ahead of us and uh, I actually ran the fastest leg that I've ever ran in Canada and for myself even though that was probably one of the most difficult seasons for me because I was dealing with an injury and I managed to catch up the five meters and out dip Team China to make it into the finals and to celebrate that with Team Canada and, and just knowing like we made the finals and no one predicted us to was beyond like it was like oh my gosh I, it was breathtaking it was like a moment that it felt like we won even though we didn't and um yeah just to know that i could help my team get canada in there to be the best of the world was everything as great as the rio games were bingham has much higher expectations going forward Rio was like the warm up. It was kind of like get the experience of being at the Olympics, get, you know, all of it. And then now that I've experienced that, it's like 2020 is like all business. 2020 is all business. You know, I'm going to be 26 at games. That's like the peak. That's like the start of where athletes are at your strongest, your fastest, in your mid 20s. So that is the games where, you know, I definitely want to be on that podium in the 100 meters, you know, definitely anchoring the women's relay on the podium as well. The North York native draws motivation from the memory of her good friend and teammate, DeAndre Barnaby. Bingham was there when Barnaby tragically drowned off the beach in St. Kitts. I think, you know, being there in that moment when he did pass away, he taught me to, like, just to finish strong in my races and in the race of life, everything. And um, I made a promise that day that I was going to do everything that he couldn't get the opportunity to do. So. When I'm in practice and I want to complain or, you know, when I'm a little tired or I feel like I want to give up, I just always think about how he finished strong, how he always, it didn't matter about how he started, it was always about how he finished and that was something that really helped me and I think it really helped me for the Rio to, you know, finish strong and help Team Canada and I want to continue to do that for every race I do and just honestly, like, just carry him with me and be able to tell the world about him because he impacted me so much. Kamika Bingham is still looking for her first medal in international competitions. After earning 7th place in Rio with the women's relay team, she's a constant presence in these events, with two world championship appearances beside her Olympic, two, her Olympic accomplishment two years ago. Coming up, Bismarck Botang transitions from soccer to track, beer and track collide, and athletes take to social media.
Bismarck Boateng will compete for Canada in the 4x100m relay at NACAC after moving from Ghana to pursue sport in North America. But that's not the only transition he's gone through in order to achieve his goals in athletics. This is Ghana. Uh, back home, we play soccer every time. We never do track. But I remember when I was in elementary school, I did track uh, one time and I just beat guys who were like in grade six and I was in grade three. So deep down, I knew I wanted to do track. But I played soccer when I moved to Toronto. I played soccer my whole life. And I went to Ryerson for soccer. Played soccer there. There was never a track team. And uh, after a couple of years in Ryerson, I just decided to just follow my heart. Transferred to York University, did track and field, and the rest is history. For Canadian sprinter Bismarck Boateng, his speed was what stood out on the soccer field. But the transition to track was more than just physical. Soccer is more, uh, I would say, teamwork, because you got to play with 10 other guys. Track is more what you call it, pretty much. It's mentally, a little bit more mentally uh, harder, because in the race, it's just by yourself. You have no one to help you, so you have to be mentally, mentally strong in track and field compared to soccer. The 26-year-old received his big break when he was called to replace Andre de Grasse at the 2018 Commonwealth Games in April. But things didn't go exactly as planned. Andre was supposed to run uh, the 100 and relay, but he had an hamstring injury uh, the year before. So I just got a call to uh, do the relay. And the relay, we dropped the baton between me and Shogun. And after the whole incident, I think that was probably one of my lowest points in track and field because I felt I let my team down. But I got a, a talk from Glenroy Gilbert and my coach and they told me these moments will always happen in track. Uh, the best thing to do is you have to bounce back from it. And I think that was the moment that changed my whole season so far. I just started working hard mentally, physically, my nutrition, and I started just running fast. That moment right there, that lowest moment, just gave me my highest moment out there. This year at NACAC, the Etobicoke native will be running in the 4x100 meter relay. He is excited to run in front of his hometown crowd. Uh, last year I went to uh, Ivory Coast for the Francophone Games. I got a bronze medal and I was so happy to be able to do that. And now to run at home in front of my family, friends, it just means so much. I'm re really excited to run at home, yeah. I've been training the whole year since, uh, since September. So NACAC, uh, even though I'm running at home, it's, it's still another meet for me. So I, I don't want to get mentally you know, aroused and think it's different, then my body is not going to respond as I want to. I've done all the work, I'm just going to go have fun and enjoy, that's it. Botang will have a chance to redeem himself this weekend after that unfortunate air in Australia. There's nothing like a cold beer while watching sports. And the president of Flying Monkeys, Peter Chiodo, has found that there are to be a lot of similarities between pushing yourself to the limit and making delicious craft beer. I sat down with Peter Chiodo to learn more. My grandfather, you know, used to, you know, take me to uh, the local brew pot, or sorry, the local brew on premise, we call them uh, bops, and we'd brew together, and it was sort of our time that we would spend together, which was kind of neat, and uh, it kind of gave me the itch to keep on trying, so, uh, as I progressed, uh, I kind of learned a little bit more as you go along, and uh, you know, now we have a, a pretty sizable brewery. Flying Monkey prides themselves in brewing radical beers and creative ales. I enjoy, you know, you have to experiment when you're in brewing. You want to try a little bit of everything. It's kind of like running. You want to go, and go and head down a new trail or a, a new path. Same principle, really. Just you've got to continue to evolve and experiment and try to better your last uh, beer and that's kind of what we do here. Peter's transition from being a runner towards owning a brewery has been a relatively smooth one due to his ability to translate his skills, learn from running, and apply them towards running a successful brewery. University of Alabama, Roll Tide. Uh, graduated uh, 1990. Uh, went down there uh, on a track and field scholarship. So I uh, went to Colorado for a year. Uh, followed my coach, moved to Alabama and sure enough, ended up there. The story of Peter's running journey is both inspiring and heartbreaking at the same time due to the various health complications that he endured during his time as a runner. I don't know if you know this about me, but I had three open heart surgeries 
and 88, 89, 90. Kind of wow. nixed my 1992 uh, Barcelona Olympic uh, hope. <laughs> so they call me zipper chest. I have the nice little scar that down the middle of my chest. So that was my running career. While it is obvious that Peter is very well tuned with the beer industry, many might not realize how involved with running and athletics Canada Peter truly is. And let's face it, I mean, you know, beer and running go together really well. For Peter to go through all of those medical complications and continue to devote his time to running is truly inspiring. Absolutely. It really shows how much running meant to Peter. He also carved out an incredible life for himself and runs one of the coolest breweries I've ever seen. Athletes from a total of 31 countries will be competing in Toronto. Some of these countries boast populations that are more similar to Aurelia than Toronto. The Turks and Caicos population is just over 30,000. Anguilla's population is at 15,000. Both of these countries will be sending athletes to Toronto to compete at NACAC. Social media has become a major part of this event. Athletes coming to Toronto to compete are taking to Twitter to share their excitement and competitive spirit in preparation for these games. When we caught up with Justin Knight, we wanted to have a little fun of our own and take a walk down memory lane. We went on to social media. Take a look. Oh man, <laughs> you guys really came prepared. <laughs> Oh my God, okay. So I remember when this happened, we were going to Penn Relays, that's Ryan McClellan. And man, I don't even know how to explain that. Like we went to McDonald's, obviously that's not the real Ronald McDonald, that, that was just a statue. And for some odd reason, we just wanted a picture with him. <laughs> oh my God. Oh man, yeah. That's my, I don't remember what the caption was, if it was for Father's Day or if it was actually my dad's birthday, but yeah, that was me as a kid. Um, you know, I guess it's kind of bad that I had the Michigan hat on seeing that I went to Syracuse, but yeah, I thought I'm a pretty cute baby, so I, I want to share that with the world. Yes, I was so proud. Graduation here at St. Mike's. Um, yeah, those were all my teammates, all the guys on my cross country team, so they were very special to me. Um, I talk to most of them still, or once in a blue moon, but you know, those guys are, they're one of my good friends forever, so yeah. Aw, uh, <laughs> it's my mom. See, I'm a huge mama's boy, so uh, you know, obviously I love posting pictures of me and my mom. That was, uh, that was my first international race that I went to. I, whoa, I went to uh, Trinidad for, I think it was NACAT cross country, and my mom was just like saying bye to me at the airport, so we got a picture. Aw, uh, <laughs> no, man, see, this is when I was a sweeter man. Um, <laughs> yeah. That was, I don't even know, what, I think that might have been grade two or grade three, but I was looking through my uh, my photo, my like baby pictures and stuff, and I was like, wow, I was such a cute kid, so I gotta like share this with the world. Probably some girls commented on it saying, oh, you're so cute or something, but yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> yeah, that's me and Connor, um, McDavid. So I used to work for BioSteel, and uh, obviously he's sponsored by them, so he came by the rink once, and uh, just working around, I got to meet like a lot of cool athletes. And Connor, he's like honestly the nicest kid you'll ever meet in the world. Um, I walked into the locker room immediately, started talking to me, asked me about what school I'm going to, what I do, uh, like if I do athletics and what, what school I go to. And he automatically said like from now on, he's gonna cheer for Syracuse. So <laughs> he's a really nice kid. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. See, I need to delete some of my Instagram photos. <laughs> so yeah, that was taken inside the Syracuse airport. Um, I just, to be honest, I just need to, I need to post a picture on Instagram. And we saw Johnny Rockets and that's my boy, Freddie. He actually, he runs for Team USA. He's a really good hurdler. And me and him were on our way to NCAAs. And I was just like, yo, Freddie, I need to update my Instagram. Come take a photo with me. And that's the history behind that one. Okay, yeah, so like everybody was giving me, uh, actually not everybody, but some people were giving me a hard time saying that my jersey's backwards, but they don't know, like back in like the 90s and stuff, that was the style. So I figured I got an autograph uh, Shaq jersey from Reebok. So when I came out here to do a photo shoot, I figured that I could take a couple cool pictures. So, you know, I just took that photo and I thought it was pretty cool. Man, that was, awesome. that was pretty dope. Oh my God, that was so fun. <laughs> Ooh. 
See you at Varsity Stadium between August 10th and 12th for track and field in the 6th. I'm Nicole Fiorini. And I'm Ashley Taylor. We'll see you at the track.